Hello and welcome to the Little Blue Vlog. How are you guys? I hope you're okay. Thanks for all your lovely comments and shares and likes and everything. You're all lovely, lovely people and I'm glad you are coming on this journey with me. So, last week we started with weekly check-ins and I want to continue that. This is going to be something we are going to do together every week because it will really help you to evaluate how you've coped well this week, what you've done well, what you haven't done so well, and ways that you can improve at another time. So, let's to go through these questions together. What has gone well this week? What have you achieved? Have you met any challenges? Was there a deadline that you had to meet that you made? Or was it just that you've been managing your illness really, really well? How did you manage it? Did you manage to communicate how you were feeling? Did you manage to control your anger? Did you manage to lift yourself up when you were feeling low? What have you done? So what has gone well? What hasn't gone so well this week? Have you met any challenges with maybe difficult people? Or have you, you know, just really kind of had one of those weeks where actually getting out of bed was probably the biggest task that you had? Then if you did that and you've been battling with your illness like that and you've struggled to get out of bed, but you managed to get out of bed, then that is absolutely amazing. Um, so what other, what else, what, um, so what have you, you know, sorry, blah, 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 <laughs> have you, um, coped well with maybe your low mood? Now this week I've battled quite a lot with my low mood. I have actually felt quite, felt quite depressed a couple of days this week, um, managed to get out of bed okay, um, but other than that it's, it's been a bit up and down for me. But, um, for, for my weekly check-in and um, I'm, the weather's not been so, so great, it's been raining a lot and obviously with the, the general election I don't really want to talk about it but I guess I should. So that's all been a bit of a bleh as well but it could have been a lot worse couldn't it peeps? Could have been a lot worse. Um, I was going to do a bit of a house tour today but <laughs> I'll show you my room right now. The bedding is needs to be changed. Oh, that's a horrible shot of my mattress. Um, yeah, I need to uh, tidy up the house a little bit before I do a house tour. So I might do one next week. I'm also thinking of doing like a and a thing at some point. So if you've got any questions or anything that you want to learn, that, sorry, any questions, any answers you, you know, need or want to have, then just, just let me know. That would be really cool. Um, now, just a different subject to bring up this week. Um, I've just been out with um, a couple of my friends for, for coffee. They have a mental illness as well. And we were just sitting there having a bit of a chat about it. Obviously, um, everyone has their own experiences, but we were talking about being in the care of our local mental health clinic and um, how, how, how under-resourced it is, how understaffed it is, and actually can be verging on being quite discriminatory discriminative discriminative <laughs> god i think there there can be a lot of discrimination so i shouldn't laugh when i say that but i i have experienced it myself i mean as soon as i you know as soon as they thought i was starting to get a bit better i was discharged from my clinic um at the time i thought it was a good thing but now when i'm starting to go back downhill a bit every now and then i get really frustrated that i'm not in their care and the only way i can get into their care again is probably to have either a suicide attempt or a severe episode of psychosis neither of which i really want um no no one no one wants any of that but it, it's, it's very frustrating because to get the care that you need with mental illness you have to be at death's door whereas with other physical illnesses such as you know maybe heart disease or you know anything like that you really do get a lot of care and it does feel sometimes i feel very discriminated against um from through my sort of you know experience of you know battling the, the nhs and things like that some of the nhs has been amazing I've, I've had i wouldn't have got half i wouldn't have got any support without the nhs so massive respect to them but there are they are understaffed they are stretched and people's diagnosis can can go wrong and and you know i'm i'm literally you know found out one of my friends you know she's got recent diagnosis of bipolar and apparently I found this out today you have to notify your the DVLA you have to tell them you have bipolar and apparently everything can go up like your insurance can go up everything like that and I'm just like so because you've got a mental illness you're being discriminated against okay maybe it's not discrimination I personally think it is because people with bipolar they're not you know some of them can drive they can cope some of them, some of them may be more more poorly than others, so it does get really frustrating. And this is turning into a bit of a rant now, but I do find it very, very frustrating that people with mental illness don't seem to get the same level of support and care that people with 
physical illness. I'm sorry, but the brain is a physical entity to me. Um, you know, it's not just like fairies and what rainbows going around up there. <laughs> not that there'd be rainbows in my head. It'd probably be dark and black. But seriously, there's so much discrimination and I get really, really fed up with it. I get really upset when I see my friends have to wait ages for their benefits to come. People that have to literally be either in the, you know, literally committing suicide or self-harming so much that you know they have to be you know taken into to to the care of a you know of an, of an institution so it's really really unfair and i'm really really upset by it today because i i love my friends um you know my i call them my normal friends because they they have their mental illness and i have mine and we kind of all look after each other and it's really lovely but when i see them getting discriminated against and when I see them having to struggle just to get something that they very, very much deserve, it really, really gets me down. So sorry about the rant today, but remember, keep doing those weekly check-ins. Remember to think about what you've done well, what you haven't done so well, areas that you can improve, areas in which you cope. How well have you coped with your illness? Because that is the main thing. Coping well with your illness is, is you know, like, yes, come on, yes, 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 I've beaten it today, I've beaten it today. So keep going, keep trying, and keep persevering, because the more you can, you know, analyse what you're doing, th thinking about how well you've done things that haven't, you know, maybe you haven't done so well, then you you know where you can you need to work, you know, and uh, areas that you need to improve on. But like I say, if all you managed to do this week was get out of bed, because you felt so, so terrible and so poorly, then massive respect to you. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Oh, yeah, apologies for the rant. Um, but any questions or comments, please.